Hello, welcome back to Monster Train. In today's episode, mark this one off your checklists. It is 9.45 a.m. Yeah, I I recorded last night and I finished the episode around like 2.30 and then I was like, yeah, I'm gonna play another one. And then I fell asleep and then I woke up at 8 a.m. So things are not going well for the set my sleep schedule to what I want it to be plan because instead I have just slept uh none eh, you know, like six hours it's whatever hope you're doing well how you doing I'm all right uh, nothing has happened to me yet today I'm gonna go turn my fan on actually while the game loads because I am warm first I gotta load though getting to be warm here it's the end of May start of June I feel like June is the month where I think oh yeah summer has begun I know technically it, it doesn't begin until like is the summer not tight? When is the... When is the... Was it the equinox? No, the equinox is in the fall. It's the solstice, right? When's the summer solstice? I think it's sometime real late, like... Well, it's every three months is one of the season switches, right? Because it's like... And I can, I can figure this out because I know that the winter one is December. So it's got to be December, March... I guess it would be June. December, March, June... What, September are the four times the seasons change? That sounds right. I think it's on like the 21st. Uh, well, the game loaded because I was thinking about the season, so I'll just pause the recording while I go turn my fan on. I will be right back in about two seconds. I'm back. It didn't take long. Yeah. I don't have a lot to tell you today, because, you know, I just woke up. Uh, I, I know what I'm going to ask you for questions, so I shall. I... So, I, I was on vacation, I went out of town to my grandmother's, I'm sure you're aware. I am back now, but my friends, they have just left for a convention. They went to Combo Breaker, if you are in the know about that. And I was curious if you uh, yourself have ever been... Uh, calling Combo Breaker a convention is a little bit incorrect, I guess. Uh, it's, it's a tournament, they're at a fighting game tournament. And I was curious if you've ever been to one of these uh, tournaments, if you have ever gone, what was it like, did you have fun, what'd you go for? They've been around for a while now, maybe you went to like, maybe you went to something real old like early Evo, which from my understanding is just dudes in a hotel lobby, but I don't know. You let me know, you tell me what it was like, and I'll tell you, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Today we have Stygian Wormkin, it is Pushback, Shadow, Chase, Energy Siphon, Echo Infusion, Guardian's Amulet. Can, I, I think that as a community we should band together and mod Chase out of the game. This, this boss is just, at this point in my life, you, there's a definite arc of, oh Chase Seraph isn't that bad, oh hey Founding Seal. <laughs> Am I gonna pick Founding Seal or Wing Steel? Wing Steel and I are not on talking terms. Uh, can I pick Conduit here? It's like a strong, probably not. I have Fracture though, so I can probably get away with it. Uh, just don't take the artifact. At the start of the game, I was like, oh yeah, Chase Seraph, he definitely doesn't seem that bad. When I say the start, I mean like when there were only three before Patient Seraph was a thing. I was like, oh yeah, it doesn't seem that bad. I'm sure this isn't that big of a deal. You just don't pick that line. And now I'm like 1500 hours in and I just want to play the cool stuff, man. Stop making me play the boring stuff, Monster Train. We could have played... Well, nothing really all that interesting here, actually, now that I think about it, but that's aside from the point. I'm mad, Monster Train. Let me play... Uh, let, let me play Thorned Hollow already. Right. There, I'll say it. Fine, you got me. Let me play Thorned Hollow. That's what I'm trying to say here. I know what I want. I know what you want. You, you and I both want the same thing, and that thing is Thorned Hollow. But Monster Train is scared. They're scared of Thorn Pala. They won't let me play it. Wow, it's... <laughs> I cannot believe I lose this Relentless. Conduit Tethys is fucking rough, man. This floor does too many. That's terrible. That is really bad. 
Yeah, it's Ice Tornado. Man, these are not commons. These are both uncommon. Give me Ice Tornado. Echo Transfer. Yeah, I mean, talking about Monster Train Balance stuff, it's like, if I were to make a change to this game, actually, what I would do is I would either move common cards to show up in the uncommon pool, or I would move uncommons and rares out of the common pool. I feel like common cards are often more impactful and more rare than their uncommon counterparts. Yeah, we can play Keeper of Echoes. Actually, I think Kinhos Carapace might be better. Is a 2020 better than this? No, probably not. I'm not keeping Keeper of Echoes. I'm going to play an Incant line unless there are literally zero Incant units on this run. I'm also going to go ahead and throw uh, Value Stone on Ice Tornado. And we picked up Echo Infusion, I think it is. Echo Transfer. So. Huh. You know what? I guess there are actually zero chances for me to see Stygian units in the first half of this run. Or not half, but like... Yeah, it's no unit drafts, two Wormkin banners. Well, that's not great. That is suboptimal, but I will not let it get me down. I will keep on moving. Playing bottom floor because, well, you know at this point, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure I don't need to tell you why we are presently posted up in the bottom floor. I want I mean I would have liked to have gotten one of these collectors but we are going to be very poor I want to catch the enemies before they I want to kill the boss before this wave walks up more accurately to what I am trying to convey to you yeah saves us like seven damage but if it didn't I would just ice tornado up here instead but I was pretty confident in the kill Keeper of Echoes keeps Tethys alive. Incredible. Flash Freeze is fine. I think we have no pings, right? Eh, no, this is incorrect. We have five fractures. This is factually false. However, Titan's Gratitude with Ice Tornado is mid. Kind of want to pick Proclamation over Shelter here, because Proclamation is a great damage spell. But I, I have three extract cards already, so I should probably pick Shelter. If Shelter wasn't purple, I think I would pick Proclamation there. I don't know, man. This is kind of grim. I guess I'm gonna go left. We'll just grab, like, a plus 25 or something here. Yeah, I... Uh, you could slap Large Stone on Keeper of Echoes. However, uh, I think that picking Large Stone on Keeper of Echoes is wrong because there's a chance that I have to play this unit if the next two drafts are bad. Like, if... if this draft, and this goes back to what I was talking about yesterday, with how you have to play this game if you want to really start winning a lot of runs. In a majority of circumstances, I'm going to leave here with a Siren of the Sea, and I'm going to walk into the Steel Shop and we're going to find Multi-Strike. Maybe not a majority, but I will have a Siren with Multi-Strike. But there's a world where that doesn't happen, and so when you think about that, you have to think about, well, what am I going to do if I don't see a Siren? And I'm probably going to play Keeper of Echoes is the answer to that question. And if I'm going to play Keeper of Echoes, I need to have room for two of them. Because one Keeper of Echoes is very bad. And if I'm going to do that, well, I'm probably going to want to play Tethys as well as a body to hold some stats. So we're going to play Keeper, Keeper, Tethys. And... Yeah, I mean, basically that's the end of this thought experiment. If you take large, I mean, I, the last piece of it is if you take large stone, you can't play keeper, keeper, Tethys without taking double space. And I shouldn't need another keeper, or I, I shouldn't need large stone to kill Talos. I should only need large stone to kill some 245s, but I suppose we'll see. Tethys with keeper is not the worst. She does offer a little bit of value. Which is nice. Also, I can cancel the pushback here, which is also nice. I do lose 48 damage, though. I think it's fine. I'd rather keep my 49 HP unit in front. Now, Talos might go mid floor or top floor again. I should have maybe played the Train Steward in front. Didn't really think it through in that regard. 
think that this is fine. I'm gonna basically, in a world where I should take a lot of damage to Pyre, I'm going to take significantly less because of Fracture, which is cool. Uh, there's no world if I. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, there's a there's a worthy consideration here. I am gonna end up pushed in a weird way, by the way. So I'm gonna start putting Echo Infusions on the train steward. Almost certainly Talos comes top floor here. As yeah, extremely unlikely that she goes mid bottom mid here. I expect anyway. Uh, the the thought I was on there, which I have abandoned since beginning it, is that perhaps I should think about if I can ever kill that front enemy with a single ice tornado. And the answer is not. I cannot. That was, like, also two turns ago, so if you have no idea what I'm talking about at this point, I do not fault you. Uh, this enemy here is very dangerous. And if I go four times three, that is twelve, which will kill. I basically have to pass my turn, and I have to accept seven, eight damage to Pyre here. But if I let that nine times two happen, I am probably going to lose Relentless. So... We shall play accordingly. Maybe not probably, but I might lose Relentless. This is the situation where I'm just not going to do the math, and I'm going to play it the way that I know is safest. It takes like 7 or 8 damage to Pyre, and if that matters, we start a new run. It's fine. It is no skin off of my uh, teeth, I believe is the saying. I kind of want to take Accelerated Incubation here, because it's purple. And I know that Kinstone is also purple, but think about this. What if I played Accelerated Incubation and then I take a Bogfly or Egg here and I put some sort of Encant effect on it, like Siren of the Sea, and then I have two and then I have four of these Siren of the Seas. That is a lot of stats. That is, if I have two eggs hatched and incanting, that is 8-8 eight, eight per incant. That is a lot of stats. Now, Accelerated Incubation doesn't necessarily help us with that, per se, so I think perhaps I'll just take an Eternal Kinstone anyway, but that idea is still here. Yeah, and it's like, well, if I, I can take Bog Crystals, it's fine. If the picks are all bad, I can pick Bog Crystals and he's probably acceptable. I can play like, uh, we can do some weird stuff here. Helven, hmm, Steel Shop, Helven Steer. I think that this is draw. It's never energy because we have Conduit Tethys now. I will probably take space after this. It's all going to kind of depend on what's in this banner here. Permafrost plus 20 consume minus 1. Yeah, so I picked Bounding Seal and then this run had zero... This, this run had a single unit with Incan on it and that unit is Guard of the Unnamed. Uh, Monster Train, that's kind of dumb. <laughs> Monster Train, that sucks. Uh, what the hell, man? That's not cool. So, yeah, I am going to play... This run is still winnable. I planned for this possibility. However, like, what the hell, man? I woke up early for this shit. Monster Train. I'm gonna play Guard of the Unnamed here because I want to make use of Founding Seal and I want to play... So the win condition has shifted, of course. The plan now is Keeper Keeper Egg Tethys. And we're gonna put plus 25 and multi-strike on the egg. And that should give us enough hits and enough stats with a little supplemental damage from spells to hopefully win. And those Keepers, they're not going to do a lot of damage, they're just going to provide stats. They are going to need a little more health to survive as well. I find that Keeper is typically not very durable as a frontliner. Uh, Monster Train, fuck you, is the other thing. Real, real quick aside here, Monster Train, uh, fuck you. That's bullshit, and you know it. Just because I planned for it and I knew it could happen doesn't mean I'm happy that it happened. I mean, I am still angry, and I think rightfully so. Monster Train, this is not cool. This is decidedly uncool monster train for you to do this to me. I will leave now. I'm not going to take any removals from the shop. I will just take my Tethys upgrade and leave. I think that there is probably an extremely good case to go chill win to here. I have no spells that cost more than one that can be conduited right now. 
and Chillwind is a great Relentless unit. I missed this in a run when I was recording the backlog. I missed that line and lost it, and I felt very silly. So we can take uh, the consequences of our actions through to a victory here, perhaps. I'm going to skip this because I do not need the money. I don't need 150 gold in order to open the next shop. I want to play bottom floor because of Frostbite. And ideally, I do draw both of my units on turn one. That is pretty nice. And then we're going to take space. We're going to duplicate Keeper. And one of these days, I'm going to get a Collector. That's going to be really cool when that happens. I mean, I guess I could have gotten them here with two Fractures, but I would be taking a lot of damage for it. Yeah, all of this is logical, I feel. I'm going to just have to deal with the curses. It's fine. And I have to go throw an Echo on the middle floor at some point. It's probably the Ice Tornado. That is fine. This egg is still unhatched, which is not ideal. I just have, I have no damage right now. And we're gonna take one. Two curses sucks. Oh man, and a 180 also sucks. I suppose in hindsight here I should probably have played on the top four and given myself more time. I, uh, yeah. End of thought. <laughs> this is not ideal. Because I am having to spend my echoes down here to hatch this egg, which is not ideal. I'm going to... Put a fracture here and just take the curse damage. And if I die, we can replay. I, I am still getting back into the swing of things here. You know, I'm sure. I'm gonna trap shoot this guy. He does the most. Throw an energy siphon here. We'll get him steward. I think we will win Relentless because we have a lot of uh, health in front of Tethys, which was the other piece of the idea here. It is uh, sure maybe this wave lives and I take a bunch of curses, but on the other hand, I have uh, money units in front of Tethys versus Pyrelight Master and I gave Tethys Frostbite. So I'll just kill before that wave goes up. It's a cool way to cheat out a wave and just not have to deal with it. This is a run where I would actually like to play all three Tethys paths. Give Tethys sweep here. I mean, just in hindsight, I guess I would rather take Spell Weakness at the start, but I assumed I would see a single unit with Incant on it that wasn't Shark. I would play Sire, Nameless Siren here because double Incant versus Chase Seraph, but I digress. I suppose. I don't really want to play Titan's Tooth because it's expensive. I could play Urchin Spines, but it's not purple, and I need purples, so I'm going to skip. Ancient Resonance is worth picking, even though it's not purple. That card is very good, but I need to get these eggs hatching a little bit cleaner, so I'll probably need to make some removals. Endless... Endless Egg? Take space? I think I need to play two of... Keeper, though, if I'm ever going to really have a chance, because I'm just going 1-1 one, one per round. If I have two eggs, it's, what, it's like six units? One, two, three... I think the better play here is to play... The best play here is to get Cheater's Hand, but the I think the play that I would like to play is... If I could draw Bogfly last every time, I'd like to do a self-infuse on the egg, but... Mm. And nonetheless, I will just put a plus 25 here, and I will reroll. Cool. And by cool, I mean what the hell monster train. But cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna go steal shop first. I'm going to put a plus 25 on keeper because there's a chance that this is tiny stone. And yeah, I could do incan armor one as well. Actually, it's probably a little bit better than plus 25 is here. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. All right, let me let me see a tiny stone and I'll forgive you, monster train. Nothing is forgiven. I'm gonna take the big damage here. I need- I, I know I'm taking a lot of pyre damage, and I'm about to walk into a fight that's probably gonna hurt me. Conscription notice is good. This maybe changes the plan a little bit, but I took the damage so I could take two removals here. Conscription notice gives us another body on the floor, which is good. I expect, but like, I don't have high hopes for this run at this point without multi-strike. 
Spell shield 2. It hurts me. Anything I care about in the next ring? Duplicate. I will not take this trial. Yeah, I have no reason to play bottom floor here. Rail beater is pretty good. And... I may as well take the 8 armor. This front is gonna be it's gonna be tricky. I think I wanna play Bog Chrysalis in front because Tethys is going to do more than the flies typically here. I anticipate. Did you see that? I didn't play that in the wrong order. I played I played the ping first for the echoes. Incredible. Who is this guy? We we have a big hurdle to get this run off the ground, and then once the run is off the ground and we start actually being able to hang out here uh, and not but uh, once I have enough damage to kill enemies, we are in a pretty good spot, is what I feel. But, uh, right now, that is not the case. Exhibit A, right here. The flies, I mean, if you give these flies multi-strike, we're actually doing a reasonable amount of damage on this round. However, we, we don't have that, so I am just going to look away as my pyre takes, like, 24 there. That is not ideal, I will admit it. Mm -hmm. It would be nice if I could stop the 25, but we do have a great floor for killing bosses. Our boss killing is prime here. Absolutely excellent. The, the, the floor has so much health, and we have scaling damage in Frostbite, so... That is good. There is a silver lining here. Maybe this game gives me, like, a holdover for Ancient Resonance or something, and then we are maybe not so bad off. Holdover, holdover Ancient Resonance with a plus 10 piercing, I think, is actually what we want to play into at this point. Just start, we gotta start playing for the win condition, and the win condition now is I need my spells to get me into Relentless. And I have to figure out how I kill the mini-bosses, but that's a later problem. I'll take Crystalline Seeds. I have to pick purple cards, I think. I could take another Ancient Resonance. God, I want to go to the Magic Shop, but I think I'll take Revenge of the Darned here. We're gonna make a bit of a gamble if I go right and I Hellvent. And the gamble is that I live to here because this path is a lot better. And there's also no Temple. Yeah, I think I need to go right. Now, many downsides to duplicating Keeper of Echoes here. I put myself higher on pack shards going into Arcus. I can't play the second Keeper. It's actually really bad, I think, if I do that. Because I'm putting myself at 70 pack shards. That is probably going to kill me, now that I have thought about it a little more. Yeah. I think I need to duplicate Echo Transfer instead. Or Ice Tornado. But that's also going to put me high on pack shards. A duplicate Echo Transfer. I would like to duplicate the Keeper here and have it for Combat 7, but I think that that's just going to be death. So, I shall press on. I live on. It's a nice combat, at least. It's Shadow Arcus, as long as he doesn't daze bottom floor. Yeah, I'm gonna... Okay, wait a minute. It's acceptable. I also get the Tethys unit. Aimless Siren. Oh, wow. Oh, baby. Wait a minute here. Hold the phone. Alright. I'm interested. I don't care about the one damage she's gonna take there. No Daze Shard when I'm playing my units, Monster Train. You are too kind to me. Truly. Great first two rounds. Very fortunate that we're fighting this Arcus. I mean, I guess it's half of the Arcuses are good when you think about it. Because the other one has uh, the spell shield, not the spell shield, the sycophants as the first wave. So, 
I think I said half there, by the way, and then you will be able to type to me, uh, half? Uh, half? Uh, half of uh, one is a two? And I, well, <laughs> I don't type that. That's just incorrect. I'm warning you. No, I, you, you know what I mean. Two of three. Half? This guy said half on the internet. He was incorrect. Get him, boys. Maybe you wouldn't type that. Maybe you knew what I meant. I've had a lot of times on the internet lately where I say something slightly incorrect, but you know what I mean, and someone inevitably goes, Uh, this idiot? He is incorrect? I am correct now? Sure, I know what he means here. The, I can use context clues. I have the capability. But, uh... Got him? And then I have to go, hey, shut the fuck up. <laughs> hey, stop typing to me. Anyway, if, if my conscription notice generates me as an incant unit every time that is a siren, we are probably okay. Oh god, do I have to click perfect insanity here to kill a mini boss? <laughs> That's fucked up. I think that might be the idea, though. It's an idea. I mean, what else am I going to do with 6 Extract? If it were purple, I would feel better about this. I don't know. There's a magic shop here. I do have to go to a steel shop somewhere along the line, but I also have to go to a duplicate. Hmm. I'm going to click it. I think it might work. We take space here. Combat 7 will probably be the next big obstacle. Now, I do actually have to go right because of the duplicates with the magic shop. And if I... I yeah, I have to go here. End of conversation. Hello, monster train. It's me again. If you don't give me a multi-strike, I'm gonna be mad at you, monster train. Monster train, I'm mad at you. Monster train, I'm not happy. That's not cool, Mr. Monster Train. We go chill in, too. Monster Train. Give me plus 10 piercing here. Yeah, fuck you, Monster Train. This game sucks. Why the hell do I play this shit? I clicked Perfect Insanity, so I'm gonna put a spell chain on Eternal Kinstone. Hmm. I mean, you'd probably pick this, and I'd probably take it as a ping, right? I think so. I think I go for, I go for the frostbite, and then I get the buff. I was just expecting it to be real bad. I will take damage, and I will take. Does space matter? It actually does matter, but I don't know. It matters because I could play endless on the egg now, but not really, you know. I gave that card damage on it because it gets affected by Conduit, so I can just kind of set it and forget it here. The buff is also okay, though. Yeah. Alright. We're at 85 pack shards. I will just go over if there is a plus 10 piercing in the next ring. Mark of Invasion has a reasonable chance of just killing me. Especially on this combat, I don't trust it. Especially here. It would have been acceptable. And yeah, Conscription Notice actually just falls off a cliff here in the next combat. But right now, it just gave me Shattered Shell, and that's pretty good. I don't think it matters. I think I want to put it in front so it kills these enemies, potentially. Alright. Alright. Here I am, once again. Hmm. Well. I suppose... I suppose what I should do here is fracture the egg so I can echo transfer the sweep. That does seem correct, and then, like, I guess I'll take the collector. My expected damage taken here from the next two waves is very high presently, I have to say. 
Uh, I'm not going to worry about Shattered Shell getting slays here. I am going to worry about killing enemies and getting purples to hatch my eggs. That was optimal. That was extremely good. Absolutely ideal. I think that playing Echo Transfer here is... A, playing an Extract card here is a big mistake. Because I need this egg to hatch. Now we can start really pumping some damage at these fools. And the double kinstone gets me closer to perfect insanity. Which is not really the sentence I wanted to be saying here. I'm really close to getting this kill. Really, really close. Perfect insanity. No. God, if it was five, I think that card would actually be so good. Six is very playable, but it's not usually playable until the second time around. And by the time you see it the second time around, you usually just don't need it anymore. Which is why it's not ideal. I don't care about Shattered Shell. I could have played that in a different order and given Shattered Shell maybe a kill there. I don't care. Yeah, if I let 50 damage go through, I actually think I just lose. I'm gonna trap shoot, maybe? I think I'm gonna trap shoot this enemy away. I'll deal with him later. Because I want to keep playing cards. Top floor. I want to keep the pace. The paces. If I because I have to spend like three cards to kill this enemy, whereas if you send him down, you can just kill him on a later turn, probably for one or two cards, and they're on the floor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's multiple cards to kill him here without taking damage on my keeper, but I get the I get the enchants, so it is worth it. Perfect Insanity, how the fuck is it? How is it not playable here? How is this card not playable here? I have four unlosable Echoes. That is just sad. That is just absolutely sad. I am sad. I feel sorrow at that revelation. I was gonna play it and I was gonna be excited. I no longer feel excitement, I just feel sad. I'm gonna pick Preserve here to freeze Perfect Insanity. Yeah, for real. I see the card. I was scratching my eye. It's Force Contamination, for sure. This deck is thick, but it's got a lot of tech in it. Bellchain Birdstone. Absolutely lovely monster train. Thank you. Karuska is an extremely good, good pickup here. That is very nice. I will probably... We'll deal with the removals here in a second. I just gotta walk through. Hold over for Ancient Resonance, and then a minus one does seem pretty good. I would have liked, I would have liked four plus ten piercing, but I could also pick up Forced Contamination here, and then I could hold that over with the Karuska, which I'm definitely buying here. And that only costs me one Echo per round. And I do have to have two, but it only costs one total. Very cool, very sustainable. And then I just start throwing out a lot of force contaminations. And that's a way to go through spell shield and do more damage. However, if I put it on the first enemy, it's going to be wasted on Keeper of Echoes doing like 60. Yeah, that doesn't seem very good. I could hold over perfect insanity. That's, uh... That's not good. I, you know, I'm down to try it, though. I think it's it's actually pretty playable. I think it's playable. I think it's doable. I think you could do it. Is it good? I mean, is a holdover Ancient Resonance that good? Well, I'm thinking about on the Divinity, and on the Divinity, the answer is, well, not really, because everything has Spell Shield on the Divinity, and it sucks, and I just didn't see Piercing. I'm gonna do it on perfect insanity. It's uh, I'm in I'm in my uh, play this game for fun era. I'm putting holdover on perfect insanity. I'm having fun. We're playing video games for fun here. Is it good? I don't have to answer your questions because you do not ask them in real time. You are watching an after image of me. I'm gonna get rid of a fracture and a frozen. I'm gonna get rid of guardians amulet. Get this card out of here. I don't have any discard and I don't want it. I mean, my second keeper. If I draw both keepers on turn one, I will be angry. This deck is 33 cards. There is no way 
that that can happen here. It just is un it is illogical. Spell chain echo transfer is good. It is I mean spell chaining this card is free with Kariska. It is positive actually. It gives me it costs no echoes as long as I have one out, and it gives me one energy. And that is nice. I'm gonna I'm gonna go reroll here. I'm gonna reroll, and I'm gonna take a minus one for ancient resonance. And I mean I guess I may as well give it a plus ten. Alright, Monster Train. If you draw me both keepers on turn one, I'm going to be angry, but it's not it's not an unwinnable position, should it happen. Monster Train, it's not cool, man. What what is this? How does it happen right away? It's not cool. It's not unwinnable. Uh, very clearly, it is not unwinnable. However, that doesn't mean I have to like it, Monster Train. I'm not happy with you. That sucks. This is very uncool. I I absolutely do believe it, though, Monster Train. I gotta tell you, you've been a bit you've been a bit rude to me since I came back from vacation. I thought we were gonna have a nice like oh. Take it easy, warm up, get back into the swing of things. No, Monster Train is just throwing me a bunch of garbage. Monster Train is saying garbage day. And it is throwing me the trash. I don't want your trash, Monster Train. It's fine, though. I mean, this floor is not that bad. I just I have all these wasted pack shards. Thank you, Ancient Resonance, for saving my run. I guess. Mm, I'm gonna start playing spells here and see where I end up before I make any hasty decisions. I think I should play Force Contamination on this enemy. It doesn't make that big of a difference though, kind of as I expected. It's okay, I'll just pick two of these off. And I do have to basically pass my next turn, but... And I think we have reached the point where my my man is stabilized here. Where the hell is my perfect insanity? Monster Train. I'm here to play perfect insanity, and you are denying me of my birthright. I am not friggin' around with you, Monster Train. This enemy lives through all of this. Oh, it's because this is a branded warrior. Yeah, I mean, he is just a body. If it wasn't branded warrior, if it wasn't branded warrior into Chase Seraph, I would have a better feeling there. However, it is, so I do not. Yeah, I mean, should I stop this pyre dam? Should I stop myself from getting ember drained on the next turn? Yeah, sure, you could say that. If you're boring, I'm gonna perfect insanity the boss now. I am playing this video game, and I'm doing it. You can't stop me from pressing perfect insanity. Look at Seraph, he is 36, 34. What is this? The before the DLC? That's before the Covenants, actually. That's pre-Covenant 25. Get the fuck out of here, Keeper of Echoes. You're banished. You're banished and banned from my run. Until next combat, where I actually would very much appreciate your timely arrival. Keeper of Echoes can take the hit. He can take the 50. He has plenty of health. Like I've been saying, we have great, great Relentless. All it is, is killing two enemies leading up to Relentless is the hard part. But now that I have a pretty good amount of purples and the, uh, the bog flies hatch pretty quickly, they are basically multi-strike. Don't let anyone tell you differently. One bog fly egg, it is very similar to multi-strike. Because you have two two hits in two space. However, uh, there is a difference. There's a very big difference. What do you think it is? I will once again this is a this is a moment of uh, test your knowledge. And the difference is pretty clear. I will not I will not wait for too long on this one. Uh, the problem, of course, is that Oh, I should have dazed the light wing. That guy is scary. No, the problem the problem is that you cannot scale a single unit here. There are two of this egg, and uh, or th there are two of them. So if you don't have AOE scaling, you get less. 
I don't know, I'm putting it on, but I'm putting it on Seraph and you can't stop me. So like if I play Echo Transfer, I can only, I only get half value, right? If you play Echo Transfer, Echo Transfer, uh, Echo Transfer on a unit with Multi Strike, you're getting 30 damage. On the flies, you're getting only 15. Not a big deal though when you get right down to it, because the flies have a very reasonable built-in scaling. Play enough Echoes and they start killing things for you. Don't do it again, Monster Train. I beg you. Oh God. Oh God, Tethys. Oh, she actually lives. We have Echo Infusion. Okay, Tethys, here we go. Animus of Speed. Tethys, stand back up. <laughs> Animus of Speed. Hell yeah. If Tethys dies, I think we are in a reasonably worse position. Not like a terrible position, but a, a reasonably worse position. So I'm going to fight the good fight here. The draw order is not great, and I would really like for Tethys to live. But I think that Tethys' fate is... It's a grim destiny. I'm just going to tell it like it is here. I did draw Echo Infusion, though, so maybe we can hold on here. Get an Echo Transfer. I am going to take a lot of damage on this round. I didn't kill this? Oh god, am I dead? <laughs> oh jeez, that's a lot of damage there. Uh, what's this he's at set? So I have to play Fracture here. Doesn't kill him? Oh god, oh jeez, oh don't look. Alright, how much damage is this? It's 30, it's 45. Uh, I live, it's fine. Not great. I just kind of played cards assuming they were going to die, and they did not die. Well, now it puts us on a little bit of a tighter time schedule here to survive, doesn't it? Ah, uh, yes, one of my keepers dies and everything goes to shit. Hey, Ancient Resonance. What the hell? I mean, the real, the real criminal here is this Revenge of the Damned. This card can't kill an enemy. That's really rough. There is probably a line here that gets me out of this turn okay. I mean, there is. It's definitely Revenge of the Damned here. And then you have to play Ancient Resonance second. I mean, I should probably play Frozen Lance. I can't regard the Cliff Defender here. You just cannot look. I may as well play the rest of this first. Uh, I need to look at how we stand here. So, it's 25-27, 77-77. So if I put this here, it's 42. Uh, I could put 2 on the Keeper and then I can play Force Contamination. I have to play Ancient Resonance, so I'm going to play it now because the damage difference is pretty minor. Uh, it's actually, it's best to play it now because these cards are even. So I can now look at this and I can say, how do I not lose on this turn? What is the line that stops me from dying here? And how, how do I live next turn? That's a problem for me of the future. This is me right now, dealing with me right now's problems. So, well, no, I can actually kind of think about next turn as well here. We can, we can start thinking, because I'm going to draw most of these cards, assuming that I draw either Perfect Insanity or Trap Shoot. How do I survive this round? Well, the answer is pretty simple. I do not want to buff up Keeper of Echoes here, because I would like to... Uh, I would like to not waste the Frontliner's damage on this Wilt Wings. Yes, that is correct. Okay, so... In that case, so one of the ideas here is to Echo Transfer, Echo Transfer, Force Contamination on the front keeper and the steel wings and that should trade and then i should wipe the floor it's like what 30 puts you at 55 times three is 170 once yeah 165 so that'll be one hit and then this will be some more it's a little more than that too like this the steel wings dies to these two and then 77 twice goes through here okay uh i think that the best idea here is going to be force contamination here kills you. Now we have 195, this does 60, and 
So can I get 60 plus this bog fly to kill here? 60 plus 75 is uh, probably not. I think that's a probably not there. 195. Even with both echo transfers, I believe. Well, it's 82. So it's plus 30, right? It is. It's just plus 30 because the echo transfer is even. Preview doesn't count in Karuska. If I can stop this 5 damage from happening, it is extremely worthwhile to do so. So it's worth taking the time here to do the math. But no, it's not. I'm just going to play it like this because there's not really another way to play it, actually. Not quite enough. That is a shame. But it's okay. I was off by 8 there. This is where we hope we can stabilize the run. I, I think that it may look grim, however, this does... It is extremely survivable. In stone, kin stone. Now, the big play here is probably going to be involving a little sneaky trap shoot. And a little bit of perfect insanity. Okay. So, sadly I did not give this Frozen Lance a plus 10, my life is much easier if I did. I can move one of these enemies away, and that is okay. I can, I'm gonna be at like, I can kill the Redirector probably. I think that it's just perfect insanity here, right, because the 20 armor is too much. I think it has to go here. 85 is not very good. It's still survivable, do not fear. So what we have to do now is we have to count out what I have to drop off of this floor, because it's either the Clipped Guardian or it's the Will Wings. And what we have to count here is that we have to count if 43 damage pushes me over a threshold in killing this tank, right? So we have 43, 45 is 88, 88, that's one. Yeah, so that these three would kill here. 79, 75 would do... 79, uh, a little more than 75 is, what's 95 is what Tethys does, plus a little more. Like, my numbers are going to be skewed a little bit because of the two more infusions here. But 70, 79 and 95 is... Like, 160-something? Hmm. I think I'd have to drop this Clipped Guardian, but that's not great. <laughs> But that is not good. I do have to stress it. It is extremely bad that I have to drop this unit. Because I'm dropping him into hell. It, if I could drop him one floor, we would be much better off. But, oh god, that's how it goes, I suppose. I cannot let a single hit go through. And if I'm wrong, I have to replay the whole combat. If I drop this Wilt Wings, it's oh, just one more time here. I could maybe drop the tank, but it's a similar problem. I think you have to do this to ever even have a chance here. And what I was thinking is maybe I could come over here and I could start building echoes and put a... No, because I can't because I have to kill the mini boss next turn. Okay, it's bad. It's really, really bad. I cannot stress to you that it is bad in a way that makes it convey the badness. We are probably dead, but... As is often the case in bad runs, we get to live another round, and sometimes one more round, one more round, one more round, you live. I have to play two spells on the top floor. That is for sure. So I have to play, it's probably Frozen Lance on Shelter. I mean, it's definitely Frozen Lance on Shelter up here to survive. Frozen Lance. Shelter. Like in perfect insanity, that boss doesn't kill me now. Okay, how do I not die on this way? The short answer is I don't. I am extremely dead here. The, the short answer is there is no universe where I'm going to survive this. And I think you take your 60 there, and we come up here and we go fracture here. We got 55 and 57 and 129. I need... These three hits, I mean, ideally I need these two hits to do 230, which is probably not going to happen, but total damage here is pretty similar. So if I draw, I, I want to play it like this because I could draw 
that's not that's not a spell chain. Yeah, I could draw Force Contamination. So you want to buff up the first one? You got to play to your outs here. We could just draw dead and lose here for sure. It's extremely possible. And we do get to kill one of these, so I should determine which one of these is going to die. God, Revenge of the Damned is so good here. Oh my God. It is not bad. 82, 69. It's probably going to be the 290. I mean, it has to be the 290. There's no way it's not. And the reason we have to pick first is because I need to perfect insanity it, and then I need Ice Tornado to kill the Marksman. Oh, Monster Train. <laughs> oh, Monster Train. That was a little bit, a little bit scary. Uh, if I can, I'm going to keep buffing this front unit now because I would like to reach... It's possible that he reaches a point where he kills this Cliff Defender next turn. And that would be very helpful. And that would be extremely good for me. Don't worry, it's not so bad as it may seem. It may seem bad, but you would not be incorrect for thinking that it is bad. Because I can't play Perfect Insanity, but I can. Because Kinstone works this way. Thank you, Eternal Kinstone. Now, I think that generally speaking, the answer is going to just be kill the one with the highest health. When I am in this position, because it's like, you you can kill here, you and you can kill here. Oh, you don't kill here. I actually die right now in the way that I was about to play this. What about you and you kill here, you... Oh, I lose a lot of damage here when I play perfect. I, I don't lose that much, actually. Do I? Oh, and I... No, I don't... I do. I do get... I get one Echo back with Echo Infusion. Okay, this turn is not easy. I mean, this entire combat is not easy. This is one of the longer Sarah fights I've had to play. I think that I just can't let this happen. I think I have to kill here. 141, indeed, that is about what I expected. Now what? I am... Ooh, there's something really important you have to notice here. Tell me if you spot the thing you have to notice here, because I have seen it. Uh, often I do these calculations and then I don't relay them to you because they don't matter. This enemy has 140, and I have three extract cards which proc off of Koruska, giving me 2-2 two, two each. This 134 does exactly enough damage to kill this Cliff Defender if I play all three of these, because he gets to 140 here. That is an important thing to notice, because that means that this wave dies easily. Like, really, really easily, because then I put Force Contamination here. And 138. And 140. <laughs> Alright. And I think with that we live to Relentless. What a crime I have committed here today. This is not cool, Monster Train. I should not get away with this. This is a criminal victory. But it is a victory. I, a lot of things went right in this combat, but this is not an easy run. I don't think that you can by any means argue that this run is easy to play. There were no multi-strikes in the shops that I looked at. There, I took double incants and got zero sirens. This is a shitty run, Monster Train. This is a real, this is a real piece of shit run, but I persevered. It's funny because like I, I played, I've played this game for so long that I only look at this run in the, from the perspective of like, man I did these things wrong. <laughs> And that's that's how it is, I guess, with Monster Train these days. But like, I can be proud of this one. It was a good run. I will never truly feel satisfaction though, because I feel like I made mistakes. Like I took, I, I didn't think about that first turn very closely, and I almost died for it. But even still, because of the nature of this game, if I, a run like this, I'm like, oh well, maybe I should have just gone to different shops or something. Maybe I should have picked different cards. But no, we won. We won. I picked the Bog Chrysalis. I, I handled the bad case. We did it. Good job, me. And good job you for watching as well. That was, that was a really hard fight. I'm awake now. I was like kind of sleepy at the start, but I have awoken. Thank you for watching.
If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.